Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to some Fortnite. Sorry we started up just a tad late, but we are already into game number one. This is the NACE National Tournament. The Eagles qualified for it, so we have six games for you today. During these six games, we'll rack up as many points as we possibly can, and then we will see where we place. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We do have a minute to lay on, so if I get to your comment a little bit later, that is why. So today, we do have a substitution plan for us. We have Ben subbing in for Tate. So let's see what we can do here, huh? Thank you all for being with us today. It's going to be a fun day of streaming, fun day of Fortnite. We're going to see what we can do here. Make the most out of this opportunity. If you do not know who I am, my name is Dave I'm the first coach and program director here at the college. I do all of our commentating, casting, production, the whole nine yards. If you were not here beforehand, we did have some Overwatch last night. Our Overwatch team beat Indiana University as well as University of California at San Diego. So they moved to being, I want to say, 3-1 and one overall. Very, very fun matchups. But today is all about our Fortnite team. So same kind of stuff. Each kill is a point. Placement points matter as well. Top 10 is where the money is. And that is where we go to get the points from. So plan for mid to late game is ideal. Let's head over by Ben and see what's up with his POV. A little bit soft there. like the Eagles are going to be making their way around, gathering up some materials. Again, this is the national tournament, so you are going to see some high-level Fortnite gameplay today. Saw Ben just kind of hanging out, waiting for that geyser to get back up. And he's also going to shoot over by Brian. The Eagles are making their way around this map on the far outside. Just kind of playing the zone, making sure that they have enough space between them and other teams. Eagles here had an excellent finish to the regular season. They finished fifth overall in the Western region. Absolutely massive. Which is why we got an invite to today's national tournament. This is the final day of traditional build style for our team. We will be then going over to no build for the second half of this semester. And it's the same kind of deal. You have three tournaments. You have qualifiers, you have points, the point system, and then if you do get topped in the region, you are invited to that national tournament. Hello, hello everybody, thank you for being here. Appreciate everyone for tuning in, this is going to be a ton of fun here today. Tons and tons of fun. So Brian and Ben just kind of hanging out around the outside of this area. Not too much going on. Need to be careful for teams that are potentially close to us. Again, 
again. This is the first game of six. So just a heads up about that. It looks like the Eagles have spotted out some other players. I want to try to get a little bit closer before they take any shots at them. Even if we want to get into a fight. We'll see what we are feeling. Ben spots him out. Brian's gonna take aim over there. But not seeing him just quite yet. We're gonna swap over to Ben's POV. Let's see what he sees. There are 71 people total in this match. That has dropped down. The team was just eliminated. 69 people left. 67 excluding the Eagles. No kills just yet, but the storm is starting to creep in. That is big. That gives Ben a shotgun to work with. A nice, nice blue there. You always want to have a shotgun in your inventory, a shotgun, an assault rifle, and Ben is also rocking a sniper rifle for that long range. So that takes this rift and they are going to fly over into the other side of the map. They're going to get shot at. That's all right. Nothing is hit by their Shots were coming from. I don't think he sees them. I don't see them either. Oh, maybe we do. Ben and Brian land over here. Still on the outside of the map, but in the zone. Both of them have a good amount of materials. Ben here, half of your half of full for wood. That is. A lot of loot over there. There's a gold rifle as well. Let's swap over to Brian's POV. Soar 3123. Thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate you. Love to see you back in here. Thank you for supporting the program. Looks like the Eagles might have found a bunker here with a lot of loot. Oh, they're going to go ahead and ping it. They might have a key to it, not too sure. That's going to go down and make sure that everything is good. And Brian is going to go ahead and follow. This has been. This has been. Taken, but there's some goodies still in here. Brian and Ben just kind of hanging out for now. Brian's gonna go ahead and gather up some more materials. 500, 500 for wood and his brick. Does not have a ton of steel, but that's all right. There are some rifts over here, so if they need to make rotations, they are able to do so in the sky. 63 players left in total. We'll see what they are able to do here. We're going to go ahead and take a rip over to the far side of this zone. They need to be careful because there are probably going to be some people on the outer edge rotating in as well. So they don't want to land too far into the zone and risk getting shot in the back. That would be unideal. Unideal. Looks like they're going to go over there. Oh, looks like they spotted some players. They're going to land closer to the inside of this outer edge of the zone. No fights just yet for the Eagles, but I have a strange feeling that they are about to get into one. 
because there are still 61 players total in this round. Again, this is game one of six, okay? So we're going to have three back-to-back-to-back. -to -back -to -back. Then we're going to have a break. And then we will have three more. It's different than our usual four, just because there are more games for the national tournament. Have more data to find those final placements of where everyone will be. It looks like Brian has spotted out some other players rotating into zone. Not going to do much against them. They just want to make sure that they have eyes on them. Keep track. Oh, Brian might be able to look for some shots. I only see one of those players. Looks like, oh, there's going to be a fight. The Eagles might have a third party. If they want it. I don't know who that is. That was strange. Okay. So if someone just randomly joined Brian's party, he's going to set that to invite only. That was awkward. So the Eagles are in a comfortable position. 56 players left in this one. Again, we were looking for a lot of these placement points. If we get these eliminations, that is going to do well. But we don't have to look for eliminations just quite yet. We have a minute 30 until this storm shrinks. Brian's checking out the zone, but while we have this down here, let's switch over to Ben's POV. Let's see what's going on with him. So there are some players around them, but nothing too crazy in terms of a threat. Six players total left in this one. Then could be looking for a cheeky elimination here. Does have that sniper rifle, so he's able to see in really long distances. Eagles are going to go ahead and start their rotation over to the zone. 16 seconds until the zone starts to creep in. We're going to gather up some new materials. In case they need to make more builds. That is a over there. 53 players. This storm is getting very, very small. Eagles need to be careful because there will be teams running up from all directions around them. As you can see, Brian is pinging that there is some danger up ahead. Probably saw a player. Eagles are going to make a rotation to the outer side of this zone. Building. 53 players still in this one. Then it's being shot at from the backside. He's going to keep back up a bit with the shields. Closer and closer, the Eagles need it inside of the zone. Some shots being taken. So 
Ben is going to heal back up to 100 shields. Brian here also has a good amount of shield. The Eagles are in a good position. They have the zone right at their back, so they know nobody's going to come from directly behind them. Fifty-one players left here. Fifteen seconds until this zone starts to creep in. Let's see what the eels can do here. They might want to see if they can catch out on the players. Ryan taking some shots. Didn't find our mark, that's alright. Eagles making their rotation. Ryan getting shot at. Ben, I have no doubt, is also getting shot at. He does lose some shield there, but everything is all right. They are now on the right's edge of this zone. Oh, there is a good shot. Ben is not giving that kill. Ten shield bomb for that player. Eagle's trying to spam him out. Lots of good hits here for Brian, but nothing to, uh, nothing to get him down. He goes here in a good position. I don't know if there still is a player left in that build. Brian thinks that there is. They're going to keep an eye out on that. Start a rotation. Got to be careful here, though, because I have no doubt that there are going to be some players close to them. Players taking some shots here. There are 42 players in this small, tiny circle, so just be aware of that. These games are going to be super competitive. Oh, Ben! Very, very low on health here. He needs to be careful. Ben here trying to build around him. Ben is going to go down on foot. Left on his lonesome. Like I said before, these tournaments get crazy. So many players in just a small space. player. Two of them gets in a lot of good shots. Trying to close up his build. There he goes. So Brian really does not have an opportunity to reboot Ben here. Shields. The storm is about to move. Here we go. Trying to get a Staying in front of this zone, not a ton of builds left for him. He does find an elimination. Oh 
Brian, very close to very, very low health. That rotation is going to heal up a little bit, though. gonna find two players right in on top of him. Yeah, they're not able to. The Eagles place 12. Was a good amount of damage. Had some eliminations in there. Tough break there with Brian going down early. But it is what you need. Two players on the left don't know if this lobby is the Buddhas, we should. He did boot us. But that's all right. The Eagles had a good placement, placed 12th, had a few eliminations. So not too shabby, not too shabby. We do have five more matches to go, so lots of opportunities to rack up some points. So we will see what happens there. We are going to toss it into a BRA right back screen as we wait for match number two of six to start up here in just a little bit. We'll see you back here soon.
Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, and we are back with game number two of the NACE National Tournament for Fortnite. The Eagles racked up seven total points there in that last game. Not too shabby. We are looking for some more. Looks like we're going to be landing at the back edge of the map. Get a nice easy start, farm up some materials, lots of trees for lots of uh, lots of wood, as well as a lot of opportunities to get some stone in the area where they are dropping. Hope everybody is having a wonderful Saturday. Some updates for other games. We have some Overwatch playing next week on Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. We also have League of Legends playing on Tuesday, and, or actually just on Thursday. Rocket League will be taking on UW Stout on Monday, and then UW Whitewater on Friday. Valorant will be playing, not sure when Valorant will be playing, but they will be playing next week. And then Fortnite, we will have a break for about a week and a half, and then we'll be back with some no build. We are landing at the same spot where we landed on the first game. For, for the same kind of route we also did last game. Okay, right now on Brian's POV, we'll switch over to Ben's POV in just a little bit. Materials. Looking for that key to this base. Found the key. We're heading down to this vault. There'll be a lot of goodies. They're deciding over who wants to get that sniper. Eagles now have a good amount of materials as well as some good loot. We're going to go ahead and make a rotation. Minute 24 until the storm starts to move in. Too pressured to do too much. This floating fortress on the outside of the map. anybody has been here so probably gonna have it all to themselves yep nobody's been here yet oh goodness I remember playing this game when this area of the mount or of the map was uh, Wailing Woods that was early on Season 1 for like season 3, I want to say. And they changed everything. Another 
are some vaults around them rotating into the zone, so we're going to see if they're going to prioritize going to a vault to use this key. Again, these vaults give a lot of good materials as well as items. We'll see what they do. 74 players total. 72. But we will have six total games during game number two. Lots of Fortnite to be played today. Eight total players now. Looks like oh, it looks like the Eagles have spotted some other players. Taking that slipstream on the back end of the zone. Eagles don't want to give away their position just yet. They do have a good rotation going. They are on the edge of the zones, and I think that they know that there's no B behind. Stream and go crazy. Other side of this map, they get out of it. They're gonna hang out right here. here just kind of looting up on metal seeing what he can see this is a nice spot to get metal it's basically everything is metal around here so that makes sense if they want to use their key on one of those chests to get a good gun. Doesn't look like they want to do that. Some shots over to the east. That's something that the Eagles are going to worry about right now. They're going to try to get to this blip. So 
the Eagles see some players up top here on this blimp. Let's see if they're going to go ahead and try to get saucy with it. Some other players going to take some shots. Nothing's going to connect. That actually does. Never mind. Ben is going to go up. Ryan here is in a tough spot. over to Ben's POV, see what's going on above. Back over to Brian, see how he's holding up here. These players are starting to close in. gets into a fight. Ben is unfortunately going to go down here. Brian does get a good amount of damage in on another player. Brian is in a 1v2 situation. Good amount of damage. Unfortunately, not able to secure the kill. Very, very close there. Just some shots not connecting. Eagles are going to get knocked out. I don't believe they had any elimination, so no points there for this or for this match. That is all right. There are four more. Again, we have one more match, and then we have a, a, a bit of a break, and then we have three more after that. Eagles right now are just kind of hanging out, waiting for the next match to commence. They won't take out this line, so we'll be able to watch the rest of this game go down. We shall see what happens. Yep, kicked this from the lobby. So, I'm going to toss him in a barrier back screen. Make sure that you are chilling out. And we will continue on with our stream in just a little bit.
Ich
Alrighty, people. And we are back into it. Okay, so we have game number three of six coming at you right now. The Eagles are loading in, and then the Battle Bus will launch in four seconds here. Sending us onto the map. So let's see where the Eagles are feeling like going in this one. Synopsis Station is an option, or they're just going to go back to where they've normally been landing, which I think is what they're going to do. Out of 37 teams, we are currently ranked 18th, so not too shabby. After two matches, looking to push that ranking up a little bit. We're just one point, or actually three points behind 15th, so we can boost up pretty quickly here if we get some eliminations and also have a good placement. So it looks like there is going to be some other teams landing where the Eagles are landing. We are going to have a fight on our hands right away. Well, it looks like, nope, it looks like Brian's going to go ahead and not do that. He's going to go over and land at this small little shack. Get this chest and meet up with Ben at a different location. This geyser just shoot him over. I guess not. He's gonna use his bounce pad and went over by where Ben is, which Ben is actually gonna fight. Oh that guy is one shot. Ben has been eliminated. But Brian is going to get his revenge on this player. Pick himself up an elimination. There is another player though, somewhere close. Brian does see him. Get some good shots. Brian is in a 1v1 build battle fight against this player. The damage in there with a the shotgun. Missed that second shot. Brian though! Picks up the two-piece, and the Eagles are on the board right away. Very nicely done, and Brian does have time to get Ben's card to resurrect him. Not too shabby. As you saw, there were some players over where the Eagles normally land. So Brian needs to be careful. So he's going to make his way over to a reboot station and get Ben back up into this fight. There's a bounce pad there, that's going to help out a lot. Brian's going to head over to the reboot station. Already has two kills. Rambrosi233, three, three. thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate it. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful Saturday. Beautiful enough for a nice national tournament. Thank you so, so much. So Brian here. So he trying to get Ben back up. Looking for a reboot station. Going to go farther into the zone. There is one coming up close to him. So he's probably going to use that one. You can see it right there marked in this mini map. Ben will come back alive and help out the Eagles once again. All 
Brady. So, Brian coming up on this reboot station. He basically has to hold Ben's card in this reboot station for 10 seconds. And then Ben will be resurrected. It does make noise, which kind of sucks. So other players could be notified that this is coming in. PitQ, thank you so much for the follow. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. As he does resurrect Ben, there's already some other players trying to shoot us out of the sky. Ben and Brian are just going to run away from that. I'm not going not gonna to deal with that right now. I hope everyone is having a fantastic day. Appreciate everyone for being here. We are still in game number three of six. After this game, there will be a short break. I don't know how long that break is going to be. I will check in with the, the organizers and, and see. And then I will make sure to announce that before we toss him to a barrier back screen. And then we have three more matches. So lots of matches to still get a lot of points. We're sitting, like I said, we are in 18th of 37 teams. Not too shabby. Not too shabby for a first year program. Am I right? Am I right? Brian and Ben a little bit split here. Not too big of an issue though. They are close enough together. If anybody gets into a fight, they will be right there. Let's swap over to Ben's POV. See what's going on here. have a ton of fantastic loot. Two great pistols and a, a single shot rifle. Let's see if we can find him a shotgun or an assault rifle here. We're going to hang out with Ben's POV. This storm is incoming, so the eagles need to move. Try some fishing for some loot. anything and he is going to rush to get into zone I mean having this kind of loadout is available he just needs to make sure that uh, he's close enough to Brian where they can fight together and then get some kills and loot up off of other players there has been a bounty on Brian so I need to be careful Jump over Brian's POV and see where he is currently. A little ways ahead of uh, of a Ben here, but not too far. There are some structures built to his right. Need to be careful for some players potentially. Brian sees some players in front of him. They are going to get into this zone. Oh, but Ben actually has some players shooting at him. He was a little bit ways away. And Brian here left to fend for himself. I don't know if Brian's going to be able to get this reboot card. Some other players coming up on Brian here. Brian here needs to be careful. There are a lot of players around him. Actually, I think there's two other teams here. Brian did a good job playing some defense. He's not have a lot of materials left, though. Good shot there. You can see the team that 
eliminated them last game. I just see an opportunity. He's gonna pop out a bit. Two players above him. No doubt they're just gonna drop down on the dragon. Yep, and there it is. Unfortunately, the Eagles eliminated here. This is the same team that we got eliminated by the last time. But we did get some eliminations. So all is not lost. Good fights there. Eagles not able to pull that one out. But uh, we do have three more games. Three more games. We will see what happens. Hopefully get some more placement points. Did do well the first game. We placed 12th. Got some points from that. We are looking for more. I believe that there is a stream going on. So I'm going to see if I can find that for you guys. Yes, there it is. I'm going to try to see if I can get this pulled up for you all. This is the official NACE stream, so we're not just looking at a Be Right Back screen the entire time. Let's play an ad. Once this ad is done, then I'll, I'll put this on the screen for you all to watch. We're streaming a stream. I think that's a lot. I don't see why that wouldn't be allowed. Let's have an ad going on right now. All right. So I want 1080p. Put this over here. I want to mute that. Put this back up. Put this on full screen and then give you sound. Easily going to retreat here and try and look for a different approach. Him and Druzy so going to stay close to each mic. other. Guys go are just going to bail on this, this one? These are other Think teams. They are. Nash going to head out the back of this building and we'll head further right into Grim Fables and into the cornfield. Probably not the worst idea. You don't necessarily want to take a fight that's going to be too intensive early on. It could lead to your downfall and early exit out of the third game. And like we said, with it being so far into the game thus far, you really do not want to go down this early in game three, which is kind of the linchpin for the rest of the night if you don't do well here at the halfway point it's really going to set you back to try and find yourself the recovery in games four five and six to end out the competition hey, you'll be playing catch up the rest of the night it's that big chunk of points players are looking for you have to be able to hold it one and three really those crucial points not only points wise but mentality wise if you have a solid game three you'll be good the rest of the tournament to close things out well and nash and druzy just to disengage here not a bad play obviously they know the team they're going up against knows what they're doing both teams handled appropriately as Poetic will take out Kiz in the feed there in the top left. And really talk about the Silver Kid and Kiz. I mean, they picked up some solid eliminations earlier on in the game, but they had some issues during the mid. As Jackie Moon looks like he got back up now, yeah! picking up an elimination Woo! and a confirm along with him to put some good points on the board. Now sitting in 30th place coming to this game, so it has a lot of ground to make up. Hey, listen, that's a you both gets your prediction to be right and the player still gets to play the game. I feel like that's a win-win all around. Oh, Everybody's yeah. succeeding. Everybody's surviving and thriving here in this game. Well, except for the 17 players that have found themselves the early exit. But it's okay because, again, it's only game number three. And for a lot of those players, you got to hope that maybe it's not going to impact their night all too heavily here. Big man on campus looking for a big impact here, though, with a sniper rifle in hand and way above the rest of everybody else at Shimmering Shrines. Did we finally get a team to drop at Shimmering Shrines? Did, 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 we fi did it finally happen? I mean, I know this is technically not the POI, but they're close enough that I'm going to give it to them, and we finally had a team decide to drop there. Oh, don't don't start talking about Shimmering Shrine. We're going to have eight duos there next game. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> uh, we, we, we mentioned Greasy Grove. It's triple conned. I mean, I don't know how many people we just griefed their whole tournament, but <laughs> guys, don't land Shimmering. I mean, it's unconned, but like, don't land there, you know? Like, not my <laughs> responsibility. Please don't send me a DM on Twitter, but poetic! <laughs> the AR beam for Regardless, oh. here's an absolute laser beam. Sporks on the high ground, though, now taking the box fight directly towards the enemy. We'll get the wall. Regardless, though, going outside the box to take it up close. 
Oh, one shot with a shotgun going to do enough. The Prime really coming in handy right there. And honestly, can you blame them? Again, this team has been so solid through so many games in a row. They find themselves very high up on our leaderboard in fifth place as it stands right now. So to see them kind of starting to feel themselves and get a bit more aggressive here. We've only got just about 20 player six out of this lobby. And these guys are responsible for almost a quarter of that. This is a team that we talked about going into this one would be a big threat. And now at the end of the or at the halfway point of the night, they continue to do exactly that. I did not have them on my notes going into this one today. I'm going to be writing them down on my notes for every competition <laughs> I ever hear of either of these guys being in this one. And uh, honestly, can, can you really blame me? And uh, well, can you blame Dozer here for trying to take shots from behind? A couple of players in front of them. It looks like they might have caught them off guard and the engagement begins. Pretzel still trying to escape. Same with Sure Shot here. But are they going to be able to? Dozer and their teammate really not letting them get all too far. More AR shots from a distance. But... And for this team, they're not necessarily in the best of places. They would love to find this early elimination and give them a decent amount of extra extra damage for the Storm Surge that is to come. Those might have overexposed themselves, though. They drop into a box in between both of the other two players. Unless their teammate can bail them out, they're in a very precarious position. We saw Dozer early on looking for the ramp rush in the high ground. Tried to drop down for the quick shotgun shot. Wasn't able to connect and took a little bit of tags from behind. And now those are just a little bit of a disengage, a lull in the fight as the third party starts to get involved the third team and track and those are still though have plenty of launch pads the ammunition track needs to find some time to heal back up or at least to rotate it out i mean a full refresh here would not be bad for this team but regardless they have the ammunition to carry them through the rest of this lobby so it's in no way needed just be some nice points under your belt to feel confident as that third party still tries to assault this duo pressuring on the initial knock or at least pretzel on low hp on 10 and truck will identify that looking with the Ooh. rapid fire smg but will barely run out of ammunition as the wall breaks kind of leaving both players in a standstill as the third party will close the distance hits gets a knock on a sure shot Wait, what? so now trek and dozer trying to disengage or play their tarp the heal will come through is now hits a jolt just hanging out on top of the loot Honestly, you got to feel bad for Track and Dozer there. They put in so much effort, pushed that team for so long, and then Hits comes through and goes, ah, these are mine. Two-piece out of nowhere, finds themselves even more eliminations. And speaking of even more eliminations, Sporks finds another duo there in the top left. And I really do want to check in on that team in a little while because it feels like they've probably had like 98 eliminations since we last, last checked in. It could be be good for them but sometimes you do see the opposite effect sometimes a team gets very eager to get those eliminations and Ooh. they get over eager speaking of over eager uh. here track very eager to get out of this fight tries to throw down the launch pad but it is quickly covered by jolton hits and they find their eighth elimination what? excuse me wait no no i'm reading that wrong i'm dyslexic i don't know what, what is that i can't that's not right what? that cannot be correct what did we miss uh, we did not see them take a single fight so far this game out of nowhere they've got eight eliminations just Okay, going absolutely crazy. Maybe you just don't listen to what I say in between games. I mean, I say I said maybe play a little bit more passive, play for placement points. They said, nah, we're dropping a 20. They're getting in the box, taking out so much of the lobby so far. And I'm sure they're gonna, another one. they're gonna continue their rampage. Sparks picks up one on the edgy, but still Solar and Coop here. No eliminations on the board themselves, but still trying to take this box fight with the teams in front of them. We are almost halfway through this lobby at this point here. Like they're, they're literally it's 24 duos remaining out of 39. We're not quite down to the halfway point, but 45 out of 78. I am, I'm almost confident in saying that like 20 of those eliminations are just the two teams alone. Sporks' teams oh. and then Hits' his team oh. here. And um, okay. I'm sorry, where did that come from? Solar Isoc goes down to oh, a one shot no. from the sniper. And that's going to start the engagement here. We've been waiting for that to have an impact all night long. And here's the first time it's really going to make a difference. Coop just trying to survive, scrambling <laughs> to try and make some builds. They've got three health. They have somehow no longer this fight which should have been a one and done almost able to get a response but it will not happen d's and zordzia zor zorid c still is kind of struggling with that name find themselves a fantastic e lemon a little bit of an emote on top of that one go ahead and stunt guys i can understand why i mean the timing was just perfect there right they have the high ground above us we're cowering on the low ground oh one got headshot sniped bet we're getting in the box we're picking up the other elimination tides are turned that's our time to shine a full refresh two what? full sets of loot now as sporks and poetic are on a ton of eliminations themselves as well and it seems like this lobby regardless of the normal trend of players trying to kind of move towards a passive play style with the last game being overly aggressive it seems like they decided to skip a few steps and just get aggressive now 
Okay, so uh, doing the math here, as long as there haven't been more eliminations, which honestly there could be, especially considering Sporks is literally... Dude, you have to have at least a little bit of hesitation. He charges straight nah. into the box without a <laughs> second thought. Honestly, <laughs> hey, listen, props to them. And ooh, props to Skolzy for getting Sadix down early on. Uh -huh. That's a big elimination on our number one players. But uh, if I'm doing the math right, eight elimin eliminations to these guys, eight eliminations to Jolts and to, uh, and Jolts and to Hits mm -hmm. means that... Of the just about 40 players gone, they have almost half of those eliminations. That is ridiculous. That, that, no, just, no, just, just not allowed at a certain point. You guys are absolutely fragging out in this game, and we're only halfway through. We said that Hits and Jolts had a pretty good game number one, but they really felt like they could have done a little bit more as we continued on. Yeah, they're proving that, and so is Sporks and Poetic here as they're charging up against War and Jack. They probably don't want this fight. War and Jack have been more of a passive duo throughout this night, so for them to start trying to get into engagements this early is not exactly what they're hoping for, and they might have gotten lucky. Looks like Sporks and Poetic are getting shot from the other end, so they're going to let them leave. You know, War, I said it time and time again, I mean, such a very, very good IGO. More Fortnite knowledge than probably majority of this lobby combined. Spent so much time learning <laughs> and, and analyzing Fortnite. Just knows exactly how to play these situations out to tarp out. Not only that, but to de-elevate exactly what you want to do when you're getting pressured by a team like that who is working upwards and trying to push into your tarp. You just go immediately down a couple layers, box back up to force them because if they try and drop down, most of the time, if they want to get in your box, you can open up your roof, maybe drop one in or look for a solid tag to try and turn the tides. But regardless, Vexy and Sirius, two eliminations on the board, not really up to par with some of our other top competitors so far this game, but still in a really good spot here. A nice little refresh on this edge zone. And once again, Bass, we're looking at a water zone. Yes! <laughs> Woo! I live up to my name, or I guess the game lives up to my name. I don't really know how to put it. You know, honestly, no, I, I put voodoo hex on this game. It's water from here on out. That's what I've done. I made sure to make <laughs> yeah. sure that this is going to happen right. throughout the rest of the night. And, uh, well, I, I have no guarantees. I am just speaking in nonsense. But what I can see is, is that it's another elimination. Somehow, Sporks finds themselves even more elims. They're technically on eight as I think they finished off a duo. But th th this team, no hesitation. They charge into boxes, get a quick elim, get a quick refresh, siphon off some health, and they just keep on moving. A lot of times you'll see a team get something like that, and they'll go, all right, let's figure out our next step. There is no figuring nah. out here. They're just still charging <laughs> in. Just absolutely no hesitation. Speaking of no hesitation, what happened to our top left? All of a sudden, players dropping down left, right, and center, and we've got 35 remaining. We're not even to the halfway point in game number three. How are we having this chaotic of a lobby? I'll tell you exactly why. It's the water zone dynamic. It's the fact that Excellent. so much of the map is split up by these rivers and lakes that the lobby basically is just getting so uncomfortable. If it pulls over one of these rivers, the rest of the lobby has to move. You can see so many of these teams positioned up towards this kind of left side of the map in the bottom right. Mm -hmm. They all have to move across rivers if they want to make a straight white line rotate, or they have to move dead side and invest materials trying to rotate into players that are already kind of set up on a good spot. So, so many of these players are, are just going to make mistakes in these zones. These are where players make mistakes, especially with the elevation changes. I mean, headshot snipes, you're so prone to them because so many players have that natural elevation. It just becomes easy for people who are pulling these zones. So a lot of it is left up to RNG as just Colby's. Again, one of those teams that has to make that far rotate, trying to utilize this throwable launch pad. Good job to de-elevate as quickly as Ooh. possible to get underneath some old bills. Is that being... Versa and Sirius is trying to spray them. They will be able to find a spot just below the team on the high ground in a good metal tarp. This is also a really good idea to not go on that initial uh, initial peninsula that is there and instead go for the island that's a little bit off to the right. Mm. Again, you don't really want to, in a water zone like this, go to the most contested part that is on land because all you're really doing is just putting yourself against more enemies versus going here, trying to find yourself a little bit more of some open space. And speaking of open space, there is none on that peninsula that we were talking about. Look how many players have just boxed up next to each other. A ton of big names. You can see Spork in the top left. Even checking in on Jackie Moon and Ramos here. We've talked about this team early on. Not necessarily for the most positive of lights but here in this game they're clutching it up they find themselves halfway through the game through the game this is what we were hoping for ben maybe me hating on their downfall or predicting their downfall <laughs> is what actually gave them the motivation to push into the top 10 that was jackie one elimination on the board now drops oh! to the low ground to pick up another one on the stricker getting sprayed now players just in front but we'll have zone and a little bit of time to get the confirms not to mention 
so many extra materials heals ammunition everything that this duo needs to play the rest of this game out as you see the teammate will go ahead and get it in the box jackie moon will take the time to expand use these extra materials since he has cap all materials to heal back up but the teammate needs to heal up uh -oh. jackie's continuing to get sprayed 16 hp down to zero now and ramos 34 hp themselves not as many materials as jackie so won't be able to find the time they're just pressured too much the lobby is too much for this duo and they will get taken out the best placement so far regardless picking up some eliminations along the way but cutie flow and super 99 once again in a really solid position here with launch pad to play this game out yeah, they do a good job of finding themselves five eliminations. They have a decent amount of damage already. And honestly, at this point, all you really got to do is just try and survive a little bit longer. Then really, those placement points come into effect. <laughs> it's the third time. I'm, yeah, I was going to say, this is the third time in a row that Cutie Flow has tried to find an opening to throw down that launch pad oh, and just no. have not been able to. Is it going to cost them their downfall? No I really way. do think it is because oh, there goes Super. No. Now Cutie's got to take a second to heal on up. It's a bold call to use the small shield to not just throw chug splashes at the ground immediately. And oh. it's going to cost them. Silver Kid going to find yet another elimination here. And... Oh, that's gotta hurt. You got three tries in a row, and on the third time, it's not the charm, it's your downfall. Oh, that's gotta hurt. I know I'd be mad. I mean, when it comes down to it, you just have to invest the materials. Go up a layer, throw it on your bone builds. Don't rely on the natural terrain to throw these launch pads. I mean, when you have the ability to build, you gotta build, and just did not build enough. But Sirius and Vexy, again, second time so far in three games that we've seen this duo up on the high ground in this fifth zone. And it will pull back over as they continue to spray down to pick up one, but will not be able to finish. But still utilizing that Xenochrome rifle to just try and rack up that damage to level it up here. No problems for them, though. Just holding, using these hard mats to still spray down and pressure this lobby down below. I am a little bit concerned, though. The last time that we checked in on this duo, I ended up predicting their demise as I was like, I don't know, they pulled the high ground kind of early, and uh, unfortunately, they've done it again. We're just getting into our sixth zone, and although they do have a decent amount of materials to build with, I don't really like that they're pulling this one so early, especially when it's a water build. Being able to try and rotate onto land back from that is going to be even more precarious, so they got to be careful. But speaking of precarious here, Silver Kid and Kiz on the low ground here are finding themselves in a rather interesting position. And they've got a decent amount of builds, and they've already got enough eliminations that they don't need to worry about finding some more. But they do need to be careful. It feels like if they have to, they can bail out at any second with said launch pad in their inventory. But, yeah, you can see how carefully they are picking their fight. They do not want to expose themselves on the side of zone that they are, as it's just going to... Uh, gain unwanted attention that they do not want to try and fight for. Speaking of unwanted attention, I guess it's probably pretty wanted. Sporks has basically taken out this entire lobby. We gotta check back <laughs> in on this dude, because last time it was like eight eliminations to the duo. How many do they have now? Doesn't matter, because Skullsy and Fades have like ten. How many duos are at double digits in this game? It feels like it's gotta be at least three or four. I said generally before this started that most duos don't reach that ten elimination threshold, but obviously I'm gonna eat my words this time around as Fades and Skullsy are already on ten. Fourteen up. Just break into the top 10 so this is where those placement points are really going to start to roll so regardless fades goals he already have 10 as they're going to look for the Whoa. high ground the perfect pad will come through it has the materials to invest going up to the high ground they will take it so fades and skulls will hold it for the first time tonight pressuring down vexy and, and sirius now have to de-elevate they hold it during that fifth zone of rack up those free placement points, saving the materials. But Faith and Skullzy, while all that was going down, and they're just sitting on the high ground nice and pretty, they were fragging out on the low ground, picking up extra materials so they could do just that. But a player will go for it, try and take the high ground from them, and that being a solo. But that Zilko rifle does so much damage. All right, Zordzi, I, I get why you did that. I mean, it's a, it's a bold call. It's probably not one I would have made, but I can get it. It's now or never type of situation there. And uh, speaking of now or never, this might be the last zone that we see this entire game because somehow we find ourselves with six duos remaining despite only being in the seventh zone, still closing in on the eighth, and even more players go down. There it goes, Faze. Now, Skulls are going to have to try and clutch up by themselves. They have a decent amount of elimination, so even if they go down here, it's still a great game for them. But you know Skulzy is looking for higher aspirations than just that. They don't want to finish in the top five. They want to finish as the number one and they're trying their best to skirt around and avoid any extra damage because now that their duo's out they got to try and play for and for survival and they might just be able to do that Ooh. speaking of a team that's not going to play for survival though poetic goes down to vexy and they find themselves with their seventh elimination for the duo of the game again 
so many teams on high elimination. In my opinion here, Ben, this is where I feel like we're going to see that upper echelon start to pull away. Our top five to top 10 is going to be on a just different league than the rest of this lobby after this one. Oh, absolutely. So many of these duos got comfortable during the mid game. They overextended a little bit, got too mm -hmm. complacent with the way they were performing, taking fights they really shouldn't be. But Vexy and Sirius the whole time playing for placements. They saw them take the high ground and utilize their materials in the fifth zone. Now it's paying off in the late game. They're just using anything they have left now because they were forced off a high ground to frag out. Making it now on to seven, but Sports is on the high ground with nine eliminations. Pressuring Sirius on the backside will get the knock. So it'll be a 1v1v2, I believe. Sports, though, will get the 10th That's elimination and the confirm onto Sirius. So now a 1v1v1 once again. Just back to a mirror of the first game finished and Sports is back on the high ground. 13 eliminations for this whole duo as just continues, continues to pressure down, but war is on the ultimate low. Oh, there's a big difference in this one. Usually it's been hits by themselves trying to clutch up for their duo. This time it's War who's going to be the interference. We've seen Skolzy and Sporks in these late games before. The question is, is who comes out on top? And well, it's probably going to be the player that is up top right now. Unless War and Skolzy get into an interesting Ooh, fight. War wait. with a one tap and keeps his duo in this one. It's a 1v1. That's War's first elimination of the game. But that might be one of the most crucial eliminations we've seen all night. And this is where war really, really thrives. As a controller player, if you can take this fight up close and personal with Sporks, could force them to get uncomfortable using any materials he has left. Tarp ahead, give them some real estate to look as war will find the time to pressure down a 40 tag from Sporks. No tags in return from war. Still though, low ground buying time. Sporks now looking for the right hand peek on the war and will drop down to pick up their 11th to make it 14. An insane performance in a crazy jump with the leaderboard for these two. They were in fifth place going into this game. We said that they were just on the upper echelon, just on the outside of finding themselves some money. If they had a big enough game, they might just be able to jump on <laughs> up into first place or somewhere similar. Um, I I'm thinking they, they might enough. have. Yeah, That's you think, you think? Uh, let's see. Let's do the quick math on how many points they get in that game. <laughs> 25 for first place plus 14 eliminations. Yeah, you can probably do this at home. My caster math ain't great, but I think I can add up that. 39 points to that duo for their performance in that game to say that was a stellar performance is that just putting it mildly i am doing them a disservice putting it like that no, uh, j just to kind of put it in retrospect fifth place going into game number three was 39 points and they got their they entire don't. score in one game so <laughs> if you know i mean uh first place uh, sorry i mean come on now you have to think ahead i mean if they are feeling this good going into the back half of the night what could they do I mean, what more could they do? They could be just getting warmed up. Who knows? I can only imagine that they're going to continue to run through this lobby moving forward. I'm excited to see what they do. It feels like the warm-up period has officially ended here. We were waiting for a while. We're seeing duos do pretty well in game number one. We start to see the pick up a pace in game number two. Now here on game number three, um... Yeah, that just happened. I don't know what to describe what we just witnessed there. It was fantastic to watch, and well, it's going to give us a rather interesting leaderboard. Trying to get that one updated for you guys as quickly as we can, because that is officially the halfway point for the night here, Ben. And it has led to some rather interesting outcomes. I do feel like a couple of the teams that we were talking about early on in the night haven't really shown themselves up. For the most part, hey, listen, we can give ourselves a quick pat on the back. Our analytical brains picked out most of the front runners early on. I think the only team that we didn't really expect to do this well is going to be that Sadik duo they did great so far and i think they're going to continue to do so but everybody else in this top five kind of our usual suspects especially i would say the sports duo is really starting to show themselves out of nowhere i mean it's it's the collegiate veterans right it's the ones that continue yeah, and have been placing in the collegiate scene just because i mean so many times more often than not you'll see a lot of pro players take a step into the collegiate space for the first time and they don't do well collegiate is a whole different breed it's a different attitude it's a different pacing of game it's a whole different way to play and once you've been around for a while, you start to master that because once you figure out the way these lobbies work and the way these players think, you could really start to do some crazy stuff and make some crazy moves. And you see that here so far tonight. I just can't wait to see how the back half of the is going to unravel because Vest, we're only halfway through. I mean, come on now. We have so much more to go. And so far, it's been everything and more that I've expected. It really has been. It's been an insane night from so many different angles. And I would say the big thing that I want to look for in this one, I'm trying to go through the leaderboard real quick and check on a couple of different teams here and there to really see who popped off in that third game. As it stands right now, I can't guarantee this for certain because there's going to be a couple more teams that do pop up. It looks like at least two teams found double digits and eliminations in that game. As far as I'm aware, it's our winners there in that game in Sporks' team. So uh, Sporks and LJ, or excuse me, I'm forgetting their duo's name here, have found themselves a fantastic result. And then in addition to that, I think it was 
was hits and jolts. Yeah, find themselves 10 eliminations as well. We knew that they were on track to do that. We were looking at them with eight eliminations early on going, what's happening here? It's not even third zone. But... I mean, hey, listen, this is how it goes. Sometimes you have teams that just have the hot hand. And if you're feeling hot, what, what you're going to do, you're going to charge in everybody else's box and show them why you are the top dog and they are just a little chihuahua. This has <laughs> been fantastic so far. You just see the uber aggression pull itself out every single time that we play. It's been so interesting over and over and over again. And well... That interestingness does actually come due to some people who make this stream happen. We want to give a quick shout out here to Extra Life, Corsair, Monster, Better Help, Duncan, the Army Reserves Officers Training Corps, otherwise known as ROTC, and Mavix. All of them have made this or have made this stream possible due to their sponsorships and the help here for Nay Star League. So again, huge shout out to all the to, uh, to all of the people that I just mentioned. Once again, Extra Life, Corsair, Monster, Better Help, Duncan, ROTC, and Mavix. Thank you to all of you guys for making sure that this stream happens, and thank you to you guys at home for tuning in. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get the leaderboard up before we go to a break, but when we return, it will be game number four of the night. We'll be halfway through this one, and you guys will have to stay tuned. 15-minute break this time. We're going to take a little bit of an extra one to give the players some time to grab some food, grab some water, but when we return, back half of the Nace Starling featuring Fortnite. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you soon.
Alrighty, everybody, and we are back. So I'm sorry, I'm not gonna have that kind of casting that we just listened to from Nace, but we are gonna get back into this. This is game number four of six. So we are in the second half of this tournament. The Eagles are currently placed 19th out of 37. Can get that ranking up as much as we possibly can with these last three games. We will see what Ben and Brian can do here. We're starting off on Brian's POV. It's looking like our duo is going to roll with a, a Spider-Man theme. Spider-Girl and Spider-Man. Going into this one. Not sponsored by Disney, by the way, so don't get this taken down, Disney. Sorry. But they're going to be dropping in. Same spot. Actually, no, not the same spot. Is it the same spot? That you're going to go no, I don't think it is. I think it's a totally opposite side of the map where they usually go to. So we're changing it up a little bit here. So we are getting into it. We can see Ben and Brian going towards this area. Let's see how they do here in game number four. Might be seeing a little bit of different strats. Going into this one. Should be a ton of fun though. So we do have a lot more Fortnite coming your way. They do land and the looting will commence. Well, there's actually a vault down there. I didn't know there was a vault down there. Already a lot of people getting knocked. You can see that in the bottom left hand corner. 71 players total left in this game. 70 now, so the number's going down quick right off the rip. Too much loot in this area. Since we're just gonna get as much materials as they possibly can. what they can do. They did spot some teams around them. Nobody that landed directly right here, but uh, I might see some fights early on. Ryan here, just swinging away at everything, gathering up materials. Currently pretty comfortable with his materials. Get his chest. Let's find an SMG. Ben's gonna share the love, give him some splashes, and both of them are up to 100 health, 100 shield. some more brick. Let's swap over to Ben's POV. Like I said, we're doing a Spider-Man theme. It looks like Ben is actually going to spot some players behind them. I don't know if we want to fight anybody yet. Ryan's going to make his way over. Ben's closely following. Materials. I like this uh, this white Spider-Man costume. It's very cool. I'm a fan. Let's turn around, making sure that other team is not close by, which they are not. The 
duo keep a hold. They are currently on the outside of the zone. We'll be rotating in here very shortly. around them. Let's see if the eagles want me to get into a fight here soon. Get my Brian's point of view. Looks like they're just gonna go ahead and turn and run over to the zone. I think it's a good call. Spots that duo again, paying for danger. Eels might be looking to pick a fight here quickly. And there's no idea that the Eagles are here. Ben's going to take some shots. The team's going to go ahead and build up, and the Eagles are going to do the same. and just run over to the zone. No fight being taken. Some shots are being taken though. Brian is gonna get a good shot in there. Nothing too crazy, no fights are being committed to. Rotate into the zone here, coming into the middle of the map. Not too much action, they only saw that one team. We're gonna see if there's some other teams though in this area. that there were teams here at some point. There is a key found. Brian's not going to take that, though. See some players out in the zone trying to get their rotation in. Trying to make it as difficult as possible. Oh, that's a lot of good shots there. Wow, Ben is actually getting shot from behind them. That's not ideal. No idea that there are players over there. Ben unfortunately goes down. Brian might be able to get his card here. He's going into the zone. This time he gets that card, but it's taking a lot of damage get it. He's going to try to make it patient. Oh, a lot of damage coming in on Brian here. Our players around Brian. Not a lot of health. 
see what he can do here. The damage there. Oh, and down go the Eagles. Good try there. There were just some players up on the high ground right behind them that they did not know about after they started to shoot at the other team that was rotating into zone. That is tough, but some, uh, sometimes that's just how it works. So that is going to do it for us. No points here gained in game number four. Two more games to go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to the official NACE stream and get that one going for you guys. Show that in the page as well. Toss that up again as we now wait for game number five. Game number five should start about five minutes after this game ends. So I'm going to mute this, bring this over. A shot. And here really, you go. Not a lot Enjoy you can do. this. Both players know exactly how to five. play this. Just pressuring down. Jersey and Nash obviously not giving up the high ground by any means, but Wavy just kind of showing them like you're really not showing a threat, not even bothering to hold the builds, just letting them kind of disappear. But Druzy, those are the shots you have to hit if you want to turn the ties as rigid. Tries to look for an angle here. A little odd shot from inside of the building. Nothing will connect, at least nothing serious is still holding inside of old build. Now retreating into the cornfields. Rigid and Wavy. But Wavy now one layer below. We'll notice they'll get back with the teammate to heal back up as a launch pad will be thrown. So now Druzy and Nash have the opportunity to hit a beam or some kind of shots out of these players gliding through. Those are the shots you gotta hit onto these players because those are the eliminations that you need to try and clean them up. Oh, that just feels like they let a huge opportunity fall to the wayside there. That really should have been at least a single elimination on one of the two players in Rigid or Wavy, but the fact that they come away with neither one of them having an elimination is really going to hurt. They're not going to be hurting all too much again because they already found the duo earlier on. They've got a decent amount of supplies around them as well as also decent health on them, so they don't really need to worry all too much. But again, for Jersey and Nash, when you're really trying to play catch-up for the back half of the day, you do not want to let opportunities like that fall away. And it really, for that team in particular, that's kind of what they're hoping for here especially against the number 15 team in Rigid and Wavy. They're currently sitting in a pretty good place. They're actually sitting tied as it stands going into this game with Nash and Druzy. So, man, imagine being able to take out your rivals. That would have been a huge win for them. Exactly what you're looking for. And Druzy and Nash will be going back and forth with this team all day. Regardless, both teams will be able to play this game out. Fades, though, in the distance. Druzy is able to identify that and trying to... Look for an angle here as Fade starts to de-elevate into the ravine. However, they're going to double back. On the left, Druzy and Player might be able to sneak by. So who's going to notice who first? Seems like the other duo might now have eyes on as Druzy continues to try and look. The shots will be fired, though. So Fades and Skolzy trying to trade shots back and forth. Nothing will connect on either side. Kind of in a stalemate now. And maybe the lobby has started to shift. Shift 60 players up at this point as the lobby now seems to be moving away from that aggressive play style we saw early on. And now all these players just really want to play their lives. They're not as willing to get into a box of the players. And they're just shifting into that passive play style. I think that's kind of what it is uh, at this point. We find ourselves with, you know, j just trying to find the balance, if you will. There's no balance here for Sporks, and it might actually cost them. Oh, boy, especially with the launch pad oh, not no. really going to plan here. Their teammates no, down, dive. and they might go down oh. with them. And indeed, they will. Sporks and Poetic, one of our frontrunners, actually our number one team after a 39-point last game, take zero points in this game and are out early. Just wasn't played properly. Had the opportunity off the launch pad to dive into the balloon, but regardless, they decided to just glide into the open. And when you're already low in a lobby like this, I mean, you just cannot be that confident to, to just assume that there's a guarantee that they're not going to shoot you out of the air. I mean, we already saw it early on in the game. Maybe some teams won't be able to make contact, but obviously this duo was able to do so. And another team looking to make contact. And Leon, 22 AP now on the back foot. will get full box. So just Colby's will pick up two, just like that. Two eliminations with a third party close by, but has plenty of time to box up. Look in the distance. 
just loot this extra stuff on the floor any extra heals teammates still not on full hp we'll have some time and shield bubbles as well as fades and skullsy talked about possibly trying to look to play passive this game but it looks like they've trying to flip the switch back to aggressive Especially when you see the number one team go down, all of a sudden that kind of just flips a switch in your brain where you go, okay, this is the makeup game. This is where we start to make up that ground mm -hmm. that they have started to gap. And again, I really do feel like we're going to see that from this top of uh, the top of our leaderboard after this one is we're going to see a lot closer of a top five. I still feel like, you know, our top five to six are going to be at a little bit of a different level than the rest of the lobby right now, especially when Skullzy is getting freebies like that. Not necessarily the best rotation on their opponents and they find themselves right into the hands of Skullzy who's going to take another elimination, their third of the game. But again, like I said, when you do see duos, significant, prominent duos go down early in games like this, it is the signal for a lot of these teams to start getting aggressive, to try and make up that ground. And I think a couple of teams, especially Skullzy and FaZe's team here, are looking for exactly that. They know they've had a good front half of the night, but if they can finish off even stronger for games 4, 5, and 6, then they solidify themselves, walking away with at least a little bit of money in their pockets. That's what you're looking for, right? Take home some cash, take home some bread! Feed the kids. That's all you want to do. The silver kid, though, trying to make some ground. Well, you like that one? Like, <laughs> uh, likes an interesting statement. I, listen, I don't know about all these. Uh, all of these. Well, they, they are kids. That's why it's weird for me. You're calling the kids ki having kids. So, uh, whatever. It's all right. You listen. Every once in a while, you got some college students or I got some other mouths to feed. For right now, I think the silver kid's trying to feed himself, though. A couple of good shots. We're gonna put down Ramos, Ooh. and now can they find their follow up here? Is is looking for them. They know they're around, but where is this duo? Have they just escaped here? Got to hide within the gas station. I like this spot. Gas station's always interesting. Has some good vents up in the ceilings as well, so it's a good place to hide. However, seems like the duo just might have been able to slip over the hill. They tried, or at least thought that they double backed, but no, the player's not within the gas station. De Silva Kid and Kiz just going to lose track of this other player. He's going to make that rotation out. <laughs> Testing the bushes. They really have absolutely no idea where they went, so a solid placement play there from that other player. As Skolzy and Fade still looking to continue their rampage. Flying over a couple duos just below them, but no problems. No shots being taken on any players. It's moving towards the rave cave. These rave cave zones are always interesting. And the one thing I'm looking for here to see if players can position themselves inside of these wind tunnels, we can still hide underneath the balcony and no players can take shots. Oh, yeah. I feel like that balcony play we've seen so many times recently. I'm surprised that it's still in the game at this point here. And it's not to say that it should be taken out, but it is one of these things where you'd think there at least be some sort of, you know, alteration made to that spot. But hey, here we are. Here's what it is. And uh, what it is right now is Skolzy and Fades looking for their fourth elimination here at the Rave Cave. Like you said, it really does lead to such interesting zones. The Rave Cave full of different twists and turns. It's a maze inside, which leads to so many interesting fights. And it's a lot of fights you can't take at a distance here. Skolzy and Fades are going to get shot at from a distance. But once we do get in inside the rave cave it's pretty much cqb on every single battle speaking of which i think that they are going to try and start up a battle here as skulls and fade seem to think that somebody is to the left side of this mountain or maybe they're just trying to get away from hits and jolts here i can't Ooh. really blame them hits and jolts have just been a nuisance to them pestering them with shots i mean it's, it's a team that's been aggressive thus far in the competition so looking to continue that but Fades will be cracked. Skullzy needs to get back with the teammate before they can continue any more of the rotation. Just split the mats, get some heals off. Uh -oh. No problem. A lot of teams are going to have that line of sight just because of the natural elevation change around the rave cave environment. But kills and MMs. Again, one of those teams that's just trying to play for placement, looting up as much as possible. As you see, a lot of these teams start to rotate towards that wind tunnel. Leaves that as an option to rotate inside of, but... I honestly am starting to think hits and jolts maybe looking to take this fight just because I mean they're prone to be that aggressive team and if they do opt to take this kills and MMs are in a fantastic position here to third party especially considering the fact that hits and jolt they're in first place effectively right now again like we said with our actual first place players in sports and their duo going out early now it's up to hits and jolts to try and make up that gap it was a 15 point gap between them and first before this obviously that gap is going to close as long as they can survive in a game like this but another way to really close that gap is stay aggressive get more eliminations and for a duo that by this point last game had like six eliminations to see them with only one right now they got to have a little bit of an itch right now. They want to try and climb up a little bit further. Speaking of climb up a bit further, Vexy finds a quick duo, and that's going to be huge for his team, who is also within our top of the leaderboard. They're in third place as it stands right now, tied with Lantiser and Sadix. But like we said, 
lot of players going out early in this one. It feels like this is going to be a very shaken up leaderboard when we come out of game number four. But for right now, let's pay attention to the action at hand. And that is Fades and Schoolsy still looking for a way out. It feels like they've kind of gotten trapped at this point here, Ben. And they're just looking for any sort of alleviation of pressure. Maybe a rotation around the edge of zone. Because as you can see, no inside Rave Cave, hotly contested. North side of zone here, not nearly as many players. No, not at all. I mean, this is that hard dead side of zone. Most of these players aren't going to be able to find themselves the time or the space to make it over there because of the natural elevation and all the hills and mountains around the POI. They can just take shots on anyone running in the open. So unless you've rotated very, very early, you're not going to have the dead side as an option because of all the players who are trying to move are so easily accessible. But edgy, though, taking a couple shots. Still on a good spot well, was one of those players able to kind of locate themselves on this dead side of zone but this is where it starts to become scary because if it does pull over this rave cave mountain all the players that invested earlier on to elevate themselves have a completely free line of sight on everyone down below and this is where you see a couple of teams actually located on top of these rifts just outside of the vault mm. because if zone does pull those rifts are basically the only mobility that's going to save you Imagine if it pulls to the northwest, though. If we get another water zone for, like, what is the fourth map in a row, <laughs> I feel like no. people are going to get angry. Oh, speaking of angry, Ooh. the Silva kid got to be a bit angry about that one. Skolzy picks up their fourth elimination on the match due to a beautiful shot with a prime shotgun there. And unfortunately, the Silva kid and Hit and their teammate have found themselves in a bit of weird positions multiple times here. It feels like we've spoken about them just being on the precipice of being able to get into that upper echelon that we've spoken about so many times here tonight. But unfortunately, when push comes to shove, they won't get pushed on over and unfortunately have to keep pick themselves back up in game number five still going through game number four though we got a long way to go at that 44 players remaining definitely not as quick to the punch here in game number four as in game number three but again after a 15 minute break feels like a lot of teams have had a time to sort of cool down and try and figure out how they want to strategize for the next couple of games speaking of strategize here i said that the north side of this zone was pretty open and it stays that way hits and jolts find themselves a beautiful position on the edge of the map Good position. Did not pull over that Rave Cave Mountain, so they'll be able to just glide over using that passive mobility. Great move here from Jolts and Hilts. One elimination on the board. Might be the lowest number of eliminations we've seen this duo with in the fourth zone in a while. It feels mm -hmm. like they've been getting so aggressive earlier on. But I, I can respect it. The, the, the shift towards the passive play style as we get towards the back half of the night where you really have to start weighing your options. And when first place is already down and out, that makes you the top dogs in the lobby. So you don't need to do anything absolutely crazy. You just need to do enough to close that gap because they already had a significant lead coming into this game. So some solid placement points with some late game eliminations is going to be exactly what they're looking for. Yeah, I really do think that that's exactly what, like you said, it's exactly what they're looking for. It's just looking for those placement points, not necessarily trying to get over aggressive. Again, when you do see that team up top, when you see one of the big dogs go down early, there are two reactions. There is either the A, okay, let's just start trying and close this gap. Let's get as many frags as we can and find ourselves enough elimination points to really close that gap. Or you see the B, okay, let's play this carefully. If we can actually survive long enough in this game, it will give us a huge amount of placement points to close that gap. So... Either one of them effective strategies for Sirius and Vexy here. Apparently, they do want to get aggressive. They are marching right on top of Red Sea and their teammate and Colby. And honestly, can you blame them when they're not getting shot at? Okay, well, I'm going to blame them for this. Sirius, well, you get the positioning and then go straight back to their duel. Maybe they got scared from something. I'm a bit confused. Some players lurking close by, possibly. Not. To, I mean, it's a whole duo. You're a solo. Your teammate's not with you. Taking a... a a peek onto a team where you have possible peace control. I mean, obviously that team is sitting together waiting for someone to look or, or peek them. They're not making any moves. They're just sitting perfectly still. At any moment, that, the tides could be shifted. Speaking of tides being shifted, Statics trying to get into this player's box, utilizing that prime shock, and they will be able to pick it up, and that being Eji, but that'll be their first elimination. They're not really able to loot much of the body, so they have to just rotate in now with only what they had to begin with. You see some extra loot off of an old elimination, so that'll give them the extra mats they need, but it's just going to pull dead side in fast. As much as I hate to say it, it seems like it might be trending towards another possible water zone. Granted, the, the fifth zone, that half and half, is not over the water with a little bit of the river the being river. there, but, but that yeah. doesn't really count, you know? But, but that first moving zone is where things really can get interesting. If it does pull over the ocean, you have that natural cliffside where no Ooh. players can actually build within it, but... The players have to make it into the zone first if they want to make something happen. 
I will say, I mean, hey, listen, to me, if you can fish, it counts as water, and you can fish in a river, so therefore water zone. Um, but at the same time, uh, it really, honestly, you don't necessarily want to try and pour, just push into those boxes, even if they are in a precarious position, like located over the river. For a player like Vexy, this is what they should be doing, looking for those sniper shots, seeing if they can land a couple here or there. They've already landed one, weren't able to find the elimination from it, but they have sort of started a spiral of events, if you will. Them taking shots at players from a distance have basically forced other people to locate those players, and then it just becomes chaos. It's a good way of destroying distracting other players to not focus on the people who are focusing on high ground. Sirius and Vexy, they have tried for high ground game after game after game after game, and I think this time they really do have it secured. It's a bold goal to do that with still four more zones to play, but hey, listen, we saw them hold on to it last game. Let's see if they can do it again here. They're going to at least try to take some shots from the heavens, a couple of raining fire at a couple different players here. Fates will pick up elimination due to it, but we're going to switch on over to Sadix and Edgy here, who... Not the best position if I'm being 100. Only a single elimination so far and not great health on Edgy means that this team's going to be in a very precarious position as we close out our fifth zone and they're going to have to rotate into the sixth. Not even in the fifth quite yet. They still have to make at least two more boxes in or towards this right side, kind of crawl through some old builds, but they're not going to have to. Just go ahead and invest some extra materials into some pre-established tarp. They'll make it into the zone and it will pull back over. However, this is where teams are going to suffer the consequences of this previous zone. You could de-elevate on this zone and you saw a lot of players do it, but now it's going to pull back up and over. So the players who didn't hold a mid ground that they held, that they held previously in one of the other zones, that opted to de-elevate now have to go right back up and with so many teams above them and with there being 29 players still up you could very easily get taken out just by getting suffocated on low yeah you really do need to be careful here positioning becoming a very important factor especially considering we're heading it's not exactly to the rave cave but it's close enough that there is going to be a change in elevation here it's definitely been some weird zones one after another but i think that that is why we're seeing so many close proximity fights the cqb i spoke about before that would be inside of rave cave is still oh. finding itself a prevalent factor on the outside from a slight distance skinny will almost take out kills here they can't quite do it but wazku their teammate might just be able to help them out i'm finding a single are you kidding me two players drop down to <laughs> oh, a unlucky. sliver of health and neither <laughs> one of them they get to finish off that's just straight unlucky but now i see jolts and hilts high ground is not really connected by much if any player is able to identify that it could be an easy top but regardless skinny and wask just moving towards front side playing a mid ground layer looking for a possible drop down or some kind of peace control not able to claim a, at least the cone but they will get the floor now looking up with the triple spray nothing will come through so uh, i say there nothing comes through but then mms will hit a catch a fly round so skinny will be able to go through but vexy and sirius once again up on the high ground but again contested and trying to lose it right now I told you that this was a bold call. I mean, hey, listen, sometimes I get to prove that I actually am somewhat of an, uh, what is it, uh, an analyst? Yeah, that's the word I'm looking yeah. for. Analyst in this game. I, <laughs> hey, listen, I might be able to analyze the game, but uh -oh. I can't speak words good. But it's okay, because I can tell you that Sirius Wait. is about to do something dirty. Mm -hmm. They're not going for the high How ground. How is he not getting shot? Oh my gosh, I don't know what's what? more confusing. The fact that no one's paying attention to him, or the fact that he had a chance to go to high ground and just opts not to. Sirius was basically two bullets away from defeat and somehow find themselves into a box. They've got no health items on them, so they're going to have to... You're kidding okay. me. There's no way they just uh, went down to Storm while healing. Are you, you know, kidding? You know, it was the play. Sirius and Vexy, it was the play to get to the front side and try and tarp. Sirius got bailed out by not getting looked at, but did not go their way in the end. Getting taken out by zone there, trying to heal up. Not able to do it. It's a 10 tick. Remember, it's not an 8 anymore. It's a 10 and will get taken down and sent back to the lobby. But SG and Sadix in a different position now. Two eliminations are able to take it from them. A good spot, not a lot of materials, but a little bit of AR to try and pick something up. Has that Evo Chrome rifle. It's gonna shred through these builds regardless if they're metal or wood. So exactly the utility that they need to make something happen. They just have to kind of close this distance and do it. However, now they're starting to fall behind. They need to get towards the front side or just hop on top of a mid-ground tarp and try and play it as Jolton Hilts are on the low ground and they get cleaned up by Skinny and Wask. Okay, Skinny and Wask are starting to do something special here. I don't know what it is. They don't necessarily have a ton of eliminations, but they are being such an annoyance to every player in our top five. I feel like they've been partially responsible for the end of this game for multiple teams that are on that upper level that we've spoken about so many times before. Speaking of upper levels, though, that high ground that we saw earlier on really seems to be completely uncontested usually you have people with just wide eyes they're staring at the skies and shooting fire up above 
feels like we haven't seen a lot of that here. Most of the fights that have taken place thus far, Ben, have been people battling for the low ground, which, again, not the usual battles we've been seeing. A lot of these teams weren't able to pick up the eliminations they might have previously gotten, so they dropped to low ground to try and make up that lost ground, and it's just not working out in their favor. Skinny and Wasp, though, find a little bit of success to pick up three, but they have the materials to back them up, so they're able to actually claim this position. However, they are elevating up one just because it pulls up natural over this hill, but... I mean, they're doing a great job utilizing the material to buy some time to drop back down to low. Skinny doing a great job of IGLing and putting them in a great spot to try and win this game. However, Eji and Sadix have absolutely the best spot and the best condition here to win. By far, but I think that the team that is going to want it the most is going to be Nash and Druzy here. The fact that they found themselves this far into Ooh. the game could have propelled them up the leaderboard even further and maybe into our top 10. But unfortunately, with Druzy going down, I think that those chances have become a little bit more slim. Skinny going to finish off the player here. Nash, Wait. though. Wait a minute. Are they going to do this? They've got enough health on them. If they get a quick shotgun shot and they go oh. down to the storm plus fall damage. Oh, no. I, I respect the play. The motivation was there and the brains were there. It just wasn't quite executed properly, but Sadix and Edgy are trying to execute and finish this game to pick up the VR. They'll clean up one. Now a player in back zone and Wasp, who's low HP, taking out the zone. 10 HP will get the final shotgun shot to finish to make it nine eliminations and the victory royale on top. Uh, Edgy and Sadix had that one in the back for what feels like a while. You mentioned it before, the wind condition not just in their favor, the wind condition firmly within their grasp, and they held on to it till the very last moments there. Congratulations on the victory royale in game number four, and in my opinion, not a professional one, well, I mean, slightly professional one, but not a guarantee because I don't do math all that well. I think they're probably in first place as well here. With a performance like that, they have definitely propelled themselves up at least into the money, or at least in a comfortable position for the money. But again, it, that almost is a guarantee, considering the fact that we see Sporks and their duo go out literally off the bat. It feels like that was the chaos we've been talking about all night, culminated all in one single game. Yeah, when you have about a 15 point lead and you're in first place, your only job is to not go down off spawn and yep. they were not able to do that. You don't have to do a lot. You've already done the heavy lifting, but now they're going to be playing catch up to try and do something big here. Granted, we've already seen them do crazy things in the games previously, so they are very capable of doing so. But now, obviously, the stress is back on your shoulders. You're going to have to put in some work. Well, the stress is on their shoulders here, but the stress shouldn't be on you guys at home. We're going to try and see if we can get uh, maybe a glimpse at that leaderboard. It may happen after the break here. Nah, we're going to head to break first. Getting told by the production that we're going to head to a quick five-minute break. But when we return, it is game number five. We're getting close to the wrap-up here of the Nace Star League featuring Fortnite. And we'll have an update to the leaderboard. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.
Hello, hello, everybody, and we are back. Game number five of six. The Eagles here looking to make a big impact in game number five. We need some points on the board to boost us up in the leaderboards. So we are going to see the Eagles land closer to the middle, not so far in the outskirts of this area. They do need to rack up some eliminations. I think that's what they're aiming towards. So getting some early fights, set the pace for themselves, and carry out a good fifth match. Here we go. A few teams landing all around. I don't know if anybody is coming straight for the Eagles here. Brian's going to land on a shotgun. There are some players down. Very close. Let's see what the Eagles can do here. There is a big pot there. That's gonna go ahead and pop that. We'll probably see a fight here shortly. Goodness, just so many shotguns are so close. Just everyone right here. Love to see a VR. Fight here, Brian. Bust through a door and happens to find some players. Uh, the jump does get a good amount of damage. Ben here up top. And Brian are gonna regroup together. And they're gonna look to get some high ground here. area. Oh, we're going to see the two Ben and Brian jump down on this team. Oh, another team is actually going to third party this and Brian is going to lose a lot of health there. Oh, and Brian is actually going to go down. Ben... Not a lot of help, and the Eagles are unfortunately going to go down early on into match number five. No elimination, so no points coming in for us. Had to risk it for the biscuit, though. Very, very unfortunate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to toss it over to that other stream. Hold on one moment. I will let this run for the rest of game number five. We'll be back later with game number six. At this point, I'd like to just see some normalcy, and I don't think we're going to see it quite yet again. These lobbies have been really up and down. It feels like we've seen some of the most aggressive games I've seen in Fortnite, and we've seen some very passive ones as well. But the good thing, still got two more games. So even if you don't necessarily pull out all the stops in game number five, you still got a sixth one to try and turn yourself around. And for a couple of these duos, I feel like they are just on the edge of that top ten. Those are going to be the teams that we start to see really with that aggression. I'm looking at teams like Archer and Seven. I'm looking at teams, excuse me, like Wazku and and Skinny here, who had such a good game number four. If they stay aggressive in game number five and find themselves some extra frags here or there and find some good placement, maybe they can crawl into that top five and compete for the money in that final game. But unfortunately for them, I don't think that they're going to try and make that crawl happen in game six. If you want to at least get close to the rest of that pack, you got to do it here in game number five. Yeah, this is your last chance to make that push, so... Uh, if you're ever going to do it, it's got to be now. Switch up the drop spot. Do whatever you got to be. Land on someone. You, you think you can win the fight off spawn. Do whatever you got to do. Rack up those elimination points and really make that final drive. Because this is it. 
Use those chrome splashes. I'm interested to see. Haven't been seeing a lot of chrome rotations, yeah. which I more expected to see. I see a lot of teams prioritizing the chrome splashes over a lot of other, say, a sniper rifle or other weaponry, but it seems like they've kind of settled in. Now the throwable launch pad sniper rifle is definitely going to be the meta for what to carry. Some three extra heals am amongst your teammates. I mean, really the way to go. Chrome splashes seem to be kind of making their way out of the meta in its current form. It's very odd because it felt like, I, I think the reason is just because of the overreaction initially is that people came in and they were like, you can go through boxes, that's great. You can throw them on other people's boxes, that's great. I have a new mo movement item. And everybody's basically yeah. reacting going, oh my gosh, it's so powerful. And then you start to see the realities of what it is, which is that while you're in that chrome splash and you're trying to, you know, wiggle away from everybody else, blob on out of there, you're getting shot at from all distances. When you're trying to go into somebody else's boxes, you're charging straight in to leave somebody with a shotgun shot straight to your face and uh well now here in game number five let's see if anybody has some free pois again so many uncontested places oh wait i see some duos are they going for herald sanctum come on drop maybe it. this Do time around Please? or are they triple conning fort Please. jonesy that's the real question there's no way there's <laughs> no way you get a triple con fort jonesy. i feel oh like God. that's more likely than landing herald yeah. sanctum like it looks like no one's landing there once again but regardless sleepy sounds uncontested but chrome crossroads Full split from one duo? Is that a full split of solo landing at Chrome Crossroads with the teammate landing in the field? How are we letting that happen? I, dude, and honestly, if it's Skullzy and Fades, it's even more confusing. This team does not need any extra momentum. I, I blame you, Lobby. I don't know what else, uh, who else to really blame at this point. But you know what we are going to do? We're going to get into game number five and get the, the action underway here again. Feels like we've seen a lot of contests off spawn, so maybe we'll see some early eliminations here again. Uh, De Silva Kid going to be the one to find the first one here. Dummy going down early. Might just be able to find ourselves with the first elimination for that duo. And that feels like a duo that needs to try and pick up the pace here in game number five. They've been so close to being able to pop themselves into our top 11 leaderboard but just barely unable to find that little edge you need to find that missing piece of the puzzle to really push yourself up there because top four is no small feat out the qualifiers these are the best of the best that nace has to offer so you really have to execute does not leave a lot of room for error but again i mean fades and skullsy to have this uncontested it is an absolutely ridiculous drop spot in its own but if they're able to loot the surrounding chests and coolers that are out in the field near the gas station in that reboot van i mean there is so much to go around they get their hands on some keys that's two vaults just for themselves and just as i say that skullsy will find one so that is so much loot just waiting for him hey listen that's what you're gonna do at the early on in this game you got one or two options either get aggressive with what the loot that you have or just loot on up as much as you can and get prepared for the long haul i feel like for our top teams like we mentioned before they're gonna be the ones that play passive here versus the rest of the lobby that is gonna get aggressive and try and make some upsets happen speaking of upsets here though not necessarily anything too surprising in our top left here we see poetic finding the first elimination of the game jackie moon recovering and taking down jay slayer here maybe we could see even more eliminations if alpha or sakai decide to make this push can see them they're kind of tiptoeing around their opponents they know that somebody's underneath them but they don't know exactly how to approach just kind of looking in windows peeping looking for any sort of toe or head that they can shoot at and i think sakai might have over actually played their hand here yeah they've kind of charged Ooh. in but a bit too haphazardly and they'll get punished for it swiss alpha now trying to run around and make up for his teammates mistake but this has become a problem they have nothing to heal on up with and as a result they will find an early exit the battle for rocky reels actually going to continue do we have three teams drop at rocky reels well still multiple places around them completely unconned i don't get it players might just want to alpha up it's more of an ego thing to claim the poi more than it is to actually place and but i mean realistically if you're lower on the leaderboard you're outside of that top five top ten even landing contested might even be the move just to try and force those off spawn fair. eliminations because you have so much ground to make up because not only is that going to be two extra points on the board but that's your confidence that's that's everything you need to guarantee that your next fight is at least going to start off well regardless cutie flow at super 99 now just hunkering down below they got to play this out for as long as possible but i do see another team just down there in the bottom left of the mini map the duo close by over at flutter barn mm, let's see if maybe that starts a fight here imagine if we end up having even more players cont uh, contesting for rocky reels here again i literally started off today saying how rocky reels used to be such a, such a hotly contested poi with so many people interested in it and we had one team dropping now all of a sudden we're getting here to our fifth game three teams drop and there's one just barely off to the left that might even try and get involved with the action 
I don't know if I'm happy with my prediction coming to life or maybe a little bit dissatisfied. It's a little bit of both, you know, conflicted feelings here as uh, the analyst side of me is very happy, but the part of me where it's like, hey, guys, there's like 16 POIs you haven't decided to go after is also a little bit upset. But you know what? We'll take away that upsetness if we see Big Man on campus or Cyber Man decide to make this push here. It feels like they've been tiptoeing around their opponents in Cutie Flow and Super 99 for a second here. Here comes the first potential shots. Cutie Flow actually shoots up and gets the damage on a Big Man and a Cyber man here they might have bit off a little bit more than they can chew ben and i think that they know that they're starting to retreat obviously making that high ground push is the way to go now putting big man on campus on the back foot using that cobra dmr to uh -oh. dish out high damage but the shots are not going to connect down to 19 hp as the teammate will try and make a solo play in cyberman but it will not come out in their way so big man on campus needs to disengage and now we see those chrome splashes coming into effect that chromified form to blob out to roll out this situation and try and find another place to find some loot because that reboot card needs to be collected in a lobby like this you need to have a teammate up if you want to play out you really do. We've seen so much, so many different times that more and more, it's the teams that have those duos going into the late game that seem to have the best chance possible. It's not just going to try and, you know, clutch it up by yourself. You can clutch it up by yourself, but more likely than not having that duo, probably the most valuable item in this game is your partner. So let's see. Can Omega Novli find themselves the two-piece onto Jack and Ward here and maybe pick up their teammate? They'll get an initial good damage, but they throw away their launch pad. They had one escape route, tried to place it too early, and now there is no escape for you my friend it's either go oh, either frag out or go home and they will start off with a frag one for one an eye for an eye war taken down entirely and not gonna Ooh. be jack though jack with a 180 finds the elimination onto omega and now can pick up their teammates reboot card and maybe get them back in this game they're in a good spot to try and make something out of a bad situation but regardless still never good to see a teammate go down early and jackie moon same situation, but four eliminations on the board this time around. Finding some success off spawn, but still in a bad spot in this current engagement. 28 HP with a little bit of materials to try and move back up towards the high ground to re-elevate themselves, but only a med mist in inventory to heal up. Players still pressuring the wall to try and look for some peace control. They will get it first try, but no control within the box. So Jackie Moon will drop down. Still nine Ooh. builds left to try and run and get them some space. You see the Chrome Splash is coming out in the phase as well. Do heal up a little bit. A couple of wide HP tags here or there to move up in HP, but still has that bed mist, but no time to buy it off. But you have to wonder, where is Ramos? Oh, unfortunately, it's not going to be there to back them up is the answer here. Jackie Moon goes down, but Jonathan charging in despite the fact that they're getting shot from a distance. Probably just looking for that refresh, a quick little siphon, going to get them some extra health, but maybe a bit too much because now Ramos, yeah, they're angry about that. You take out their duo, they're taking out you. Oberino not around to help him out, and Jonathan's down to 5 HP. A single SMG shot should be enough. Jonathan going to quickly heal on up with a chug splash, but that probably is enough for Ramos to know that if they can get one more good shot, it will be enough. Oh, they're going to actually go up and shield keg. Probably the better idea here, to be honest. When you know you've got the health advantage and your opponent's eager to try and finish you off while you've got low health, just taking a second and forcing them to play your game is brilliant out of Ramos. You have to dictate the pace and doing a good oh, job of oh, that oh. off the right-hand peak on to Jonathan. A nasty little angle to pick up that closing elimination. Now we'll have enough space to go and get that reboot card and the reboot off itself but fades and scoldsy on the other hand once again getting into some engagements here during the mid game playing top down outside of the gas station near log jam junction just spraying mms out of the air and it seems like this time around they are going to make contact gets the crack but not the knock and i'm going to do the same thing with the teammate on the kills not making as many tags or as much damage onto the teammate but it looks like they want to be in hot pursuit uh, this is what we've seen out of Fades and Skolzy before. Is they have sometimes overplayed their hand by getting this aggressive, but for the most part, this is usually a pretty successful strategy for them, especially when they can catch the wind tunnel and keep on flying by. They're just kind of looking for these players. MM actually drops right in front of Fades and Skolzy, probably not where they were hoping to land, but bit miscalculations for them going to cost them dearly, and then Fades immediately turns around, probably call out from Skolzy as they saw them flying away. MM's going to be here, but they're going to get finished off. A quick little siphon for Fades going to give him some extra materials and send him on his merry way as he also pursues his opponent. I gotta love this. Part of me, not a huge fan of this game of tag that we keep on seeing this ring around the rose where people just kind of fly around the map. The other part of me, it's engaging. It feels like a car chase. <laughs> a car chase indeed. It's always action. It's always that fast energy. As Hayes not though. 
trying to slow things down off the 144 can play slow but as long as you hit your shots it's not gonna matter Hayes not will come out on top this time around we'll need to look for the reboot on a Leon as they have their own three eliminations but Skullsy and Fades found one earlier on in this game but now have returned and kills being the solo with the third party now getting involved and rigid they'll still have top control with three players two different teams lurking below but they're playing for distance quite well using their ars and peace control to play together so if anything goes down any significant tags any returning damage they'll be able to get back together and play that advantage this is, feels like it's going to be a big fight here. Even if we see Rigid or Waves go down early. I mean, this is a team that's been hovering outside of our top 10 pretty much the entire night. They've been very close. But they're very capable fighters. And that's why I think that this is going to have such impact here. Fades and Skullsy, if they go down early, obviously we know what the impact is there. That really just puts them in such a hard position to try and recover in game number six. But if you take out Rigid and Wavy, all of a sudden, a lot of those stragglers in the mid ground, those people that are probably somewhere between sixth place out to like 15th to 17th, they're going to struggle because that means that the big duo is already out of this one and it looks like they might be wavy unfortunately gonna have to fight by their lonesome here as Richard goes down they might just be trying to retreat but i don't know if there's much place to retreat they find themselves right back into log jam junction and it looks like they're trying to escape no matter the cause crow splash goes down and i think they're gonna actually be getting away with this one fades and scolds you know they don't need to overextend here they need to play this one carefully and oh uh -oh. wait a minute no more shots from a distance i think for a second wavy was gonna get away with that they decided to go for the boat and that might cost them Wavy is still utilizing those chrome splashes. It's that fast swim mechanic that still helps you out. But however, there is the delay once you get out of the form that keeps you from building. So it will take a little bit of damage. Down to 32 HP. So has to find some space. Only building a little bit before popping that second chrome. Will that be enough though with another player in front of them in fade? So Wavy is forced to box up. Now is the time to pop your minis in a big pot before this player is going to force the fight because Skolzy is not going to let you get away. Barely able to slip past them before he gets the wall control. But now the other team is starting to get involved. So Fades will clean them up. So now this duo is continuing their rampage. Well, the only good thing, and that's, I really do say the only good thing for Wavy at this point, is that Faith and Skullsy have now turned their eyes onto somebody else, so maybe they'll overextend here, and that'll let you catch up on the leaderboard just a little bit due to this duo going down. Maybe that's why we're hunting them down. They knew they had a key or something similar. On. I don't really know. There, we can theorize all day if we want, but unfortunately, it's not going to work out here as Wavy does go down, and their duo is completely out of this game. This is a bold call. Is Faith just going to let Skullsy go for the 2v1 here? If this actually happens, this is either the best gamble I've seen all day or probably the worst. I think it's the worst. And I think they know <laughs> and, and I think they know that because it seems okay, like they're, they're both going to go yeah. ahead and rotate out. Um, yeah, it would have been a very uh, risky play is the word I'm going to use. Um, <laughs> that seems like the appropriate word to use there. Risky play. But speaking of risky plays here, that was a solo. Zered trying to run away from a team. Because now the zone is so small, so many players are starting to stack up. And granted, if your player, if your teammate, I should say, goes down at this point in the lobby, if you're able to hit a launch pad and glide away and distance yourself as much as possible, the rest of the lobby is really going to punish that duo trying to advance on you and close the distance. So should be able to play out as a solo, but a reboot is more than likely not going to be possible. But speaking Whoa. of reboots, this player is going to need one as Sporks puts them down. Oh, Sporks and Poetic. I feel like these are some of the cleanest players we've seen all night. They don't always take too many fights, but when they do take a fight, man, is it pretty to watch. They are one and done absolute kings. They will take a shotgun to your face and send you home with only a shot or two between them. So I got to like the way that Poetic and Sporks are looking right now. They found themselves in a decent position as well. They are in second place. And again, the big thing I feel like we need to talk about is the fact that they were in first place. And after going down so early in that last game, you know they are out for revenge in this one. Ben. 100 percent Poetic and Sporks, I'm sure, are not complacent with their current performance mm -hmm. and want to do more here. Two throwable launch pads, six chugs, a really solid loadout. Granted, it has that silenced SMG, but not my favorite weapon in the loot pool currently. But obviously, yeah. in the hands of Sporks, whatever they've been doing in this game so far is obviously working. So continue that. Continue that momentum, that confidence now as they address and push close the distance on this solo oh! with the fire and initiate with that sniper rifle. But Poetic is there to back up the team in and Sporks will be able to heal back up. Has the Slurp Fish, that instant heal up, that one second to pop at 40 HP before they try and contest for the high ground. As Brian is now 
looking to de-elevate slightly off the sprays of Poetic and Sporks. Nothing crazy yet. This duo realizes the severity and the skill level of this player and knows they need to address this appropriately. Respect them. As now the distance is closed, the box fight will ensue, and Bryant will be taken out by Sporks. I gotta give credit to Bryant. They tried their best to just try and hold off that duo. They knew that the odds of coming away from a 2v1 fight, the winner, were rather slim. So what do they do? Try and just scare them away with a sniper shot. It's a good idea, but unfortunately, it's not going to be enough of an idea to really give them any extra momentum. Um, Speaking of not giving you any there extra momentum here, we were there waiting all night for this. Fade and Toasty as well <laughs> will find themselves the, the, you know, the little arch underneath the wind tunnel. I mean, hey, listen... Lads, it can it'll get you only so far. Um, I'm not even gonna really acknowledge it. I refuse to. <laughs> you refuse to acknowledge it. It's part of the game, Bass. Serious strategy, but speaking a serious strategy, Stig on the back foot, utilizing that prime shotgun with that rapid fire. Ooh. It's just too quick. The swap over is so snappy. Stig is able to pick out both as Hezzy is not. The third party will not fully commit to it as the smart, because this is gonna be a rave cave zone. So so farly elevated up on top of the mountain. It's not really worth for any of these teams to try and de-elevate to close the distance. However, they have so many extra materials to just tarp all the way in. Stig realistically here should go ahead and open up and start tunneling to give their teammates something to run through rather than just sitting on the low ground to wait because if they poke their head out here and teams are already waiting on their arrival, they can get taken out very, very quickly, but it looks like it's going to go their way. Oh, look at this. We got an interesting rave cave. Yet <laughs> and oh we goodness. found... All right, so... Let's, uh, let's, let's summarize what we're seeing here. War has joined them in the wind tunnel. Meanwhile, Skinny and WazQ have found themselves waiting for them to exit out of the tunnel. So we've got two parts of this. The people who are just shying away from fights altogether and Skinny and Wazq who are just waiting for the fights. The contrast here is dramatic. It's, one, it's two opposites, right? There's two halves to a coin. <laughs> and uh, some, somebody has to be the aggressor. Someone's the passive player, right? This seems like yin and yang is what we've been talking about all day. The passive versus aggressive games and sports and poetic continue their aggressive assault on this lobby. Their next victim seems to be seven. Had a rough night so far, but again, one of those original, those long time collegiate competitors that have continued to show solid placements in the past, but Sporks and Poetic are looking to be the disruptors here and play spoiler to show that they're new top dogs. I mean, honestly, they kind of are the new top dogs, at least in my opinion here. We haven't seen a lot out of Lancer and Sadix, which makes me scared that maybe they found an early exit here in game number five. And if they have, just uh, imagine if multiple games in a row we see early exits out of our first place teams and we see it again here in game five i feel like at that point this lobby or i guess this event is just cursed to never have any sort of sustainability for our front runners but hey listen that just makes it all the more entertaining for us and well this is pretty uh, and pretty entertaining here sports and poetic fighting up against seven and orchard and this feels like a team that has been slowly crawling back into contention here as the night has gone on they started off a little bit slow now they're in 10th place here in game number five and we talked about this for certain teams this is what they're looking for. It's not a game five that propels them straight into first place, but a game five that gives them a chance in game number six. And if Archer and, excuse me, and if Archer and seven can do that here, imagine what they can do in game number six. Doesn't take a lot if you're already set up for it. They just need to execute. And so far, they're doing a great job of fending off Sporks and Poetics Assault on their tarp within the center of the zone, so no problems, just buying their time over. Both of these teams just bleeding resources and materials. The Sporks will hit a significant tag there, but nothing to warrant a full-on assault as Archer still on the back foot. Sporks is able to get the wall, but will miss the edit, so, so will not be enough. Sporks still holding the right-hand peak. Both of these teams so seasoned when it comes to competition. They know how to handle this pressure. They know how to handle fighting other players at their skill level and no one's going to benefit from this it really does feel like at this point it's just kind of a stalemate both teams are sitting here going no you push my box no you push my box no you put and no one's doing it <laughs> they just basically recognize that it's too hotly contested but it's okay they'll have something else be the impetus of their movement here it's going to be the fifth zone Five, half and half has arrived and i don't know if you're noticing this one ben pretty much everybody on the opposite side of zone this oh, one ends no. up dropping southeast and everybody is northwest towards rave cave meaning we're about to see the great migration and it's going to be a weird one with the elevation at hand and Seven and Archer are equipped for it at least. Here's the Chrome Splashes. Normally we'll see those throwable launch pads, but this duo's rocking the Chrome Splashes and won't actually up to use it. 
right now don't have too far to go so i can actually respect the rotation here without to use a little bit more materials to get themselves in a nice spot they could have went over a little bit further towards the front side of the zone that'll give them a little bit more distance and more of the zone to actually look to hold players but regardless there's going to be some other players close by that'll box up but the problem is with taking a spot like this that's below other players and not further out towards like that far edge is now since that player has already boxed up close to them they've cut off that whole angle at the zone they could actually look to pick up an elimination so basically this left them kind of defenseless and not really in a position to do anything aggressive you want to talk about defenseless though i mean they don't, may not have a ton of defense but you look to the top of rave cave right now i think it was super 99 with their teammate up there who just have the high ground far and away they've set up a fortress that they can just peer down upon all the rest of the lobby from and well skinny and wasq here not going to find themselves the same sort of advantage they're actually going to go up against jolts and hits who this is probably the most surprising turn of events zero eliminations Half wow. the lobby gone. Usually this team is responsible for like a quarter of the lobby getting sent home. So man, they're playing a very different game here in game number five. Yeah, we've seen these mountain zones too. I mean, generally you'll see the mountain zones. It forces players to get into uncomfortable engagements, but this lobby still resisting. Wants to play for placement. Nobody really wants to get too aggressive after that game number three. The, f the switch was flipped. Everyone in here still wants to play with patience. If you see the player just in the distance, if you like that one, but... <laughs> Cutie flow at Super 99 hanging out in the high ground. Look at them. They, they, they literally are just sitting up here going, all right, do what you want. We'll uh, maybe get a sniper shot here or there. Actually, I mean, they don't actually have a sniper on. This is, I hate to say this, this is the most ill-equipped lineup I've ever seen for somebody on high ground. A, a shotgun and an SM. You don't even have an AR on you. I don't, yeah, shotgun shot from a, I mean, listen, ambitious. I appreciate that. Nine. I don't think it's going to work. Uh, yeah, that's about the end of my statement. Yeah, nine tag, 20 tag, I mean, solid damage, you know? I mean, granted, when you get into those later moving zones, players start to run out of hard materials utilizing wood. That's where that rapid fire could really start to pack a punch, but you have to make sure that you can lock it down until that point as patience seems to be being patient on this backside Ooh. of zone. And I talked about what you can really do with that rapid fire SMG as now it seems patience has bide their time in the zone and looking to push these players to make them get uncomfortable or possibly contest as now they'll drop an elevation. So Cutie Flow and Super 99 are not exactly where they should be towards the front side over a mid ground tarp, but they're making up lost ground. Well, not only that, but we finally, for the first time, all... Okay, never mind, and it's gone. I was going to say, we finally get the storm surge, and it's gone within about a <laughs> half of a second. I'm never going to be able to talk about that, and I hate that, because it's one of my favorite parts of this current Fortnite meta, is this approach to forcing teams to get aggressive. We don't need to force anybody to get aggressive, though, as we see names drop like flies in the top left. It feels like everybody's going down. <gasps> Judy wow. Flow and Super actually drop wow. down to the skies, and all of a sudden, they find themselves eliminated. Schoolsy and Phage play, the, play them like a fiddle and then head to the high ground to contest that was a brilliant play and that is putting it oh so mildly what a turnaround from skullzy and fates it's not even that they're on 13 eliminations already Ooh. with 25 players up using that chrome slash to de-elevate because it does not and it negates that fall damage mechanic because of the cont contestation on height and immediately drop off the high ground using this new mechanic and then going towards the front side to pressure will be able to heal up as well and they have more chrome splash i mean this team is executing 2 at exactly how high ground should be played but once again somatic and pexia found themselves on height Oh, let's see. Can they hold on to it? They've tried this so many times before, and they've been kind of a mixed results here and there. Sometimes successful, sometimes not quite able to hold on. Speaking of not quite able to hold on, Super 99 will officially find their exit in this game after having the high ground oh so early. And, and there it is. Like I said, there's the issue. You put yourself on high ground, and a target gets painted right on your back. Everybody is going to be gunning for you and trying to send you right back down to the mud with the pigs on the low ground here. And I think that Pexy is going to actually voluntarily head down there. They got find themselves some decent supplies. It's actually not going to be too bad now they can heal on up and take a second gear but again without their duo they're now left in a very precarious position we talked about it all night long here ben having your duo going into these last couple of zones is not just valuable it's almost necessary oh absolutely i mean with so much on the line you need to have a duo if you want that win condition at the solo win the team game mode is just not gonna have it granted we've seen a couple games so far where it's ended up being a 1v1v1 and at that point you can play as a solo mm -hmm. but in this lobby so far with so many duos up and still trying to make something happen you have to have a team and you see where it comes into play there blood don't zen and twitch straight to dawn now moving on this backside of zone to try and clutch up some places points but sports and poetic are still 
being the disruptors. And they've had these eliminations for quite some time. I feel like we last time we checked in on them, they were at like five or six. They pick up a couple more here to get up to eight. But for the most part, this team's been playing strategy. And I think I can see why. They do not necessarily have a ton of health items on them. They have a couple of them here and there. But for the most part, they're running low on resources, including builds. Uh -oh. 39 total. This team's got to be careful, especially considering they now have to elevate all the way up this mountain. It's a really weird zone. Again, we talked about how the mountains around Rave Cave can lead to some rather weird circles. And it's officially arrived. Sports and Poetic trying to find their way Ooh. in. And the final and elimination as well. Vexy caught off guard, and it's another one of our front runners sent home packing. So Sporks and Poetic will make that 10. So now Sporks had to split with the teammates and play solo. Make it up this mountain. Whatever you got to do, we'll get back together at some point. But they will finally reunite. Poetic just on the backside as Sporks continues to tarp. But it scolds and fades just above. A 2v2 scenario as Poetic is now knocked to a 2v1. Sporks continues to drop through old builds to try and buy some time. Because at this point, there is no win condition. And this duo continues to spray down. However, now it's pulling over old builds the, re the res is not going to be possible a skullsy will get the confirm on poetic so a 1v2 scenario will ensue oh boy and this is going to be a big one this feels like it could have an insane impact on the leaderboard and well we find out which team's going to have the bigger one it's going to be skullsy in phase with a victory royale held on to the high ground in one of the weirdest zones we have had all day but honestly that that's kind of what it is if you see yourself in a weird position all you're going to do is Take advantage of it. I don't know how else to explain it. Honestly, if you have that high ground like that, use the win condition in your favor and take the win home. Victory Royale, yet again for that T.O. Oh, actually, is that their first of the night? I feel like that's their second one, correct? It is. No, that's their first of the night. They've been close. Wow. Third place and a fourth place finish. That's their first win. Yeah, I mean, you get yourself there over and over and over again you make it into the late game you're bound to have your pop off and that's it right there played perfectly took the high ground during that second or third moving zone zone pulls up and over these mountains at that point it's just guaranteed just pressure down do what you can they were able to pick off poetic on the backside. still that's the vr exactly what they needed i'm excited to see where they are on the leaderboard well, we're going to have to find out in a little while here. We're not going to try and rush into this leaderboard quite yet because we've got one last game to go. Going to throw to a quick break here. Let you guys check out some on the replays that we just had in that last game. And when we return our final match of the night here for the Nace Star League featuring Fortnite, do not go anywhere. We'll be back in just a couple moments.
Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the final match with the NACE Fortnite National Tournament. The Eagles are currently placed 26th out of 39 teams. Looking to get up on that leaderboard here quickly. Eagles trying to make a dent in there. Baby place top 20. We shall see though. Heading into the last one. If you stuck with us throughout this entire stream, thank you so much. We appreciate you. But this is the final match of traditional build for our Fortnite team. Now on Brian's POV. Brian and Ben looking to make a name for themselves right here. They do their best to get up get some kills and get some good placement here. We shall see what happens. So like I said, this is the last match of the tournament as well as our traditional build style. And then we're moving into the second part of our season, which is no build. So you're not going to be able to build like these, you know, not worry about farming materials, not have all the, like, these big fortresses that we're seeing that people are building. It's more so you have to work with the terrain that you're given, hide behind trees, hide behind hills, utilize the buildings that are already made into the game. So that is going to be the second half of the season. Very excited about that. Get some variety. We shall see what happens. So the Eagles right now, it looks like they have Shimmering Shrine all to themselves. And they're rocking an anime theme here for our skins. Brian rocking Goku. Oh, look at that. And then Ben rocking Goku from, uh, from Dragon Ball Z, and then Ben is rocking Sasuke from Naruto. And while I mentioned, why don't we go over to Ben's POV and see what's rocking here? A little bit of buffering here that'll go away in just a second. There it goes. So the Eagles here getting into a rotation. There are 66 players total in this one. Let's pop back over what's going on with Brian. Not too much, he's just far enough. Seeing what he can see. A lot of people just got knocked down. 63 people left in this one. 61 excluding the Eagles. Eagles are going to make a rotation here into potentially the middle of the circle. They are on the outskirts of the first circle that we'll be forming, so they don't really need to go too far, but uh, they're looking to probably be aggressive here, get some kills. This is the final game. We might as well set the pace. Brian 
spots out some players. Let's see if we are going to engage them. Go. Brian and Ben taking some shots here. Not to get anything connected, but definitely got their attention. Got there. This could be looking to rush this, which I think they might be interested in doing. That is exactly what they're going to do. They're going to take the high ground. To see what kind of damage they can do here. Ryan sees a player. Ryan also gets some high ground. Ben right behind him. These players are going to go ahead and run away from running Ryan. So no fight to be had right here. Those teams are playing for placements. We are as well, but we gotta get aggressive when we can. Here on Ben's POV. He's currently he does have a golden sniper rifle. I didn't realize that he had that. That's a pretty insanely good find. Basically, that will uh, that'll either that might knock down someone with full shields and full health with just a headshot. So it can be extremely deadly if you hit a good shot. POV, nothing too crazy in this house. Nothing too much better than what they already have. There's a blue sniper rifle there. Not something that Brian wants, and Ben already has a golden one, so they are good to go. spots out some players here. I think that they have also spotted Brian. They are going to start building up. Brian's going to take the opportunity that they're not looking. Oh, and Ben actually gets sniped. Not sure from where. It's going so oh, he's already been finished. It looks like Ben got caught out in that house. Oh, Brian. 
Ryan's gonna get shot from behind. That's just not ideal. He's gonna go ahead and heal up a bit here. 44 players total here. Bend them off and. Oh, but he actually sees a sky base. Brian's actually gonna get credited with a kill there. He knocked down that sky base. Very nicely done. Some more players around Brian. He could be looking to get a little cheeky here. Get some more damage off. Dash here for this balloon. More players around him though. Brian's shield is cracked. He takes this balloon. Let's get out of here quickly. He does not have any shields left. And this is storm is moving in fast. So pop a chroma splash. Get the heck out of here. This is more players. Brian is going to get into a fight here. Let's see what he can do. Brian not does not have a lot of health. Doesn't have any shield, so. And Brian almost able to get that shot in. Unfortunately, eliminated. Does get a point, though, because he got that elimination. But that is going to be it for the Eagles. Tough break there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the stream that this other team was, or that the, the program was doing. See what's going on. In game five, we've seen Fades and Skull team rack up 30 eliminations. Catching this team is going to be a feat, and that is putting it very mildly. First place may be locked in stone, or they can make it towards the late game. Well, I shouldn't say locked in stone, but they're just so consistent and so capable of popping off that if you make it to the end game, it's just so unpredictable. But the rest of the top four is still very easily up for grabs for anyone really in the top five, obviously. Just keep your eyes out. No top competitor has gone down just quite yet, but someone is bound to make a Well, guys, if you want to check out this stream nervous. for yourself, head over to Twitch and type in Nace Star League, and you will see that. We are going to go ahead and stop streaming, though, on our end. We appreciate everyone for being here. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Noli, thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. Thank you so, so much. Only we actually are stopping our stream. So that is going to do it for us in the National Tournament of NACE. I'm going to go ahead and check out the leaderboards. I believe that we placed. You guys can check them out with me as well. Let's see where we are. 22nd, 10 points. 22nd, tied for 22nd overall. So 22nd in the nation is not too shabby in my book. Again, if you want to watch this stream live for the rest of the game, there's this is the final game of the NACE Star League National Fortnite Tournament for the traditional board or traditional build split. Go ahead and type in NACE Star League in Twitch and you will see them. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Dan Duhon, I'm the head esports coach and program director here at Edgewood College. Signing off, we will be live this week. Fortnite will be live later on. I believe our first I believe next week, next week or the following week, we'll have no, the no build section of our league. So, again, thanks for being here. And deuces. Have a fantastic weekend.